Today we're going to be talking about the bones. We started talking about it before, but today we're going to go into some more details. Now, who was the guy that we had for our bones? Charles. Sher Sherlock Bones. Sherlock Bones. Let's bring him out. But in this section, let's just go over what we're going to talk about today. We're going to first talk about the structure of the skeletal system. We've already started talking about it, and we're going to go into some more detail today. Then we're going to talk about the formation of the skeletal system. How is it formed? We're going to look at that. And then, bless you, we're going to look at the function of the skeletal system. Why do we have it? And lastly, we're going to talk about what happens when we have bone injury and disease. All right, let's go into the closet here and get all of our skeletons. No, I'm just joking. And get Sherlock bones. His neck is a little, his head is a little on backwards, huh? There we go. That All right, without looking at the screen, I want you guys to identify the parts. Are you ready? Yes. All right, let's make it happen. This is the skull. This is the... Okay. No, we're not going in order. We're not going to go in order. That's too easy for you. Let's go. These are the... Ribs. Sweet. This is the... Femur. Femur. This is the... Patella. All right. Whoa, he's, he's kind of dancing. This is the what? Okay, and what do I call this entire thing? Spinal column, the vertebrae. All right, the top here I call? Cervical vertebrae. Did you just look at the screen? No, right? You wouldn't do that. All right, so this is the cervical vertebrae. This is the? And this is the? Lumbar. This guy down here is the? What is it? Are we gonna are we gonna come to a conclusion? Okay, that's the sacrum. And this would be the coccyx. Alright, sweet, we got all of that. What's the top bone here called? The top vertebrae? Okay, sweet. This is the mandible, that's the max maxima ma maximus. That's gladiator, right? That's gladiator. Okay, so this is the maxilla. This is the clavicle, the bone that Mr. Samuel broke. This is the sternum. sternum. This is the manubrium. manubrium. Good job. Good job. The manubrium. All right. This is the humerus. 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 It's very funny. This is the ulna. radius. Radius and ulna. ulna. You guys are amazing. The arm is about to fall. Oh, we don't want the arm fall falling off. Okay. Whew. This is the what? This is the tibia. 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 Let's see. Oh yes, yes, yes. We gotta go here. This is the scapula. scapula. Good job. Good job. I think we're good. Remember? Okay, remember the first part of your test. We'll just have a blank version of what you see on the screen, and you are responsible for filling in the blanks. Okay, so we've looked at all of that. Now let us talk about the skeletal system structure. All right, uh, the adult human skeleton consists of approximately 206 bones. Okay, the adult human skeleton, approximately 206 bones. Um, there are two main parts to the adult, hu to the human skeleton. Number one, we have the axial skeleton, and the axial skeleton is the part that has the skull and the bones that support it. So in other words, the vertebral column, the ribs and the sternum, all of that we call the axial skeleton. And the appendicular skeleton, that would be the bones of the arms and legs and structures that are associated with them. So um, that would be, for example, the carpals and metacarpals, phalanges, the humerus, radius, ulna, femur, tibia, fibula, and those bones. Those would be a part of the what type of skeleton? What type? Appendicular. And the other one was the axial. axial skeleton. Sweet. Let's talk about the joints. Bones, they connect to each other, right? And the place where they meet, where two or more bones meet, we call joints. And this usually facilitates movement of bones in relation to one another. Okay, I have my arm here. I can move my arm in this direction, in that direction. I have a joint here by my elbow. 
and my elbow joint allows me to move my arm like this. All right, we have joints throughout the body that allows us to move. If we didn't have joints, it'd be really strange because we'd be walking all like this and... Okay, we also have some joints in the skull. Um, but those joints are not for facilitating movement or anything of that sort. But we do have some joints in the skull. Now, uh, where we have bones meeting, they are connected by ligaments. Now, what type of tissue do you think are we going to have in the li ligaments? It's, it, it has to be tough, yes. Okay, but what type of tissue did we say holds stuff together? Connective. connective tissues, right? It's kind of like the organic glue. All right, so this is a tough band of connective tissue. Now, let's talk about the difference between compact and spongy bone. There are two types of bone tissue. Um, first, we have the compact bone. And if you look at a bone, this is what you're seeing. Okay, this is the, the outer layer. Um, the layer of hard bone that surrounds every bone. Okay, so the outside layer that you see, that's the hard bone, that is the compact bone, and this is composed of osteon systems. We're going to look at some of the details of that in a little while, but osteon systems or make up the com compact bone, and we call the living bone cells osteocytes. What do we call them? Osteocytes. osteocytes. We're going to talk about that, osteoporosis. We're going to talk about that a little later. Um, these cells receive oxygen and nutrients from small blood vessels within those osteon systems. So we have little tiny blood vessels that deliver blood, that brings oxygen, that brings nutrients, because the bones need those also. Um, and we have nerves that conduct impulses to and from each osteocyte, each bone cell. So that's compact bone and then we also have spongy bone and this is less dense um, because it's filled with holes and spaces and we find that on the inside. Okay so the outer layer would be the compact bone and then we have spongy bone which is less dense. Kind of like a sponge you know you have those holes and so on that makes it a little um, softer. Um, that is what we're having with this spongy bone. Excuse me? We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Good question. You guys are just way ahead of me. Awesome. Okay, let's talk about how bones are formed. Formation of bone. Now, as an embryo, we don't start off with bone. We start off actually with cartilage. So the skeleton, the vertebrate skeleton in the embryo is made of cartilage. And look at the cute little um, embryo in formation. Now, by... By week nine, this is when bone begins to replace that cartilage. So we're starting off with cartilage. Is cartilage harder or softer than bone? Softer, softer right? We're starting with cartilage, and then by week nine, we're going to start with the formation of bone rep uh, that replaces the cord cartilage. Now, there are blood, blood. That's how we say it at home in the islands. Okay. There are blood vessels that penetrate the cartilage, and then the cells of the cartilage become osteoblasts. What do they become? Osteoblasts. What did we say living bone cells are? Osteoblasts. Living bone cells are osteocytes. Now, we're starting with cartilage. Then we have blood vessels that come in. And when they penetrate, it becomes osteoblasts, which are the cells that are going to become the bone cells. Question? Is that true? Yeah. That is true. It's cartilage. And if you, you feel it, you see it's not as hard as bone. It still has some structure, um, but it's not as hard as bone. Oh, this part doesn't move either. Excuse me? This yeah, up here, that would be part of the skull, and that, that would be made of bone. Oh, all right. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. All right, sweet. Where else do you find cartilage in your body? No. Ears. ears, right? You have your ears. It has some structure, but it's not as hard as bone. All right, so these osteoblasts, once the blood vessels come in, they become osteoblasts, and these are the potential bone cells, the ones that are going to become bone cells later on. Now, osteoblasts then are going to secrete the protein collagen, and this protein is very important because it causes minerals such as calcium to be deposited in the bloodstream. Now, what do calcium do for your bones? 
They make it stronger, right? They make it harder and stronger so that it's not as um, fragile. Um, so collagen comes, deposits these minerals, and these calcium salts and other ions cause the osteoblasts to harden and become osteocytes. So in the embryo, what are we starting with? Cartilage. Okay, cartilage, we have blood vessels coming in and they become what? Osteoblast. The osteoblast secrete what protein? Collagen. Collagen, and then that deposits these minerals and all that good stuff, and then we end up with osteocytes. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so we're talking about how this process is happening in the developing embryo so that eventually you end up with this strong skeletal system that does not bend as easily, does not break, and all of that good stuff. Now, are your bones the same size they were as when you were born? No. Are you sure? 100%? 100%. Okay, okay. I think you guys are right. We're going to see how right you guys are. Um, bone growth. Let's talk about how that happens. Now, when we're talking about bone growth, bones need to become longer and they also need to become thicker, right, as you grow. Now, in terms of the growth in length, this happens at the ends of the bones where we have cartilage plates and this is, goes back to what you were saying before where at the ends of the ribs we have um, some cartilage um, at the ends of the bones we have cartilage plates and this is where the growth in length happens um, growth in diameter that's the thickness making them thicker um, this happens at the outer surface of the bones okay so on the outer surface of the bone where we're that's where we're adding width that's where we're adding in diameter uh, making the bones thicker. Now, when do you grow the most? Like teenage, years. teenage years. Okay, there's a growth spurt that happens there. And that's because we have um, sex hormones during the teenage years when you're going through pu puberty um, that accelerate growth. Okay, so during your teenage years is where um, there's going to be accelerated growth. Now, when I was in, <laughs> when I was in high school, I was the t shortest person in the entire school. <laughs> All the girls were taller than me uh, when I first came to high school. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, it, it, it did suck. Um, but thanks for pointing that out. I appreciate it. So I, was, I wasn't the youngest, but I was the shortest. And when we went to PE, we had to line up from you know, tallest to shortest. So I was always at the end of the line. And that used to make me feel bad. You know how I feel? Okay. Why? Because I was the shortest person in the entire school. I did at that time, okay, well, I'm short. <laughs> to bring back all these harsh memories. Anyhow, I remember when I was in, we call it Form 3, I guess here that would be my junior year, um, I just started growing, and I was so excited. I remember the day that I went to PE, and there was one girl that was shorter than me. Oh, I felt like a man then. <laughs> Woo! I was, I, was, I was excited. So, uh, and then I started growing, and I grew about that much that year. So it was, it was good. I was really excited. So if any of you are short and, you know, dealing with that stuff, I, I, I know exactly what you're dealing with. I like being short. You like being short? Yeah. Good. Sorry, I got kind of sidetracked there. Let's continue. Let's talk about the functions of the skeletal system. Because we have this beautiful skeletal system, it has to have a reason for being there. And that's what we're going to talk about. Number one, first function, it provides a framework for the body. Okay, If we didn't have a skeletal system, it would just be blob. You don't want to be just a blob. You want to have structure. You want to be able to walk. Um, it provides a framework for the tissues in our body. Number two, it protects the internal organs. Do you have internal organs that need to be protected? Yes. Yes. Like what? Lungs. Your lungs. What else? Heart. 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 Okay. You don't want any and anything to Brain. hit your br Oh, yeah. That's a very sensitive internal organ. You want to protect all of... We have these internal organs. We want them to be protected. Um, so we have a skeletal system to help us in that process. In addition to that, this is something we don't typically think about when we think about the skeletal system. But did you know the skeletal system also produces blood cells? Okay, where does it produce those blood cells? Bone. In the marrow, the bone marrow, okay? So we have the red marrow, which produces red blood cells, white blood cells, and cell fragments for clotting. Are those clotting fragments, the clotting factors important? Yes. Why? 
Okay, you, if you didn't have these clot clotting factors and you start bleeding, you get a cut or something, you could start bleeding, you'd continue bleeding and you don't want that. Okay, you want it to clot so that um, you can heal. Okay, so the red marrow produces these blood cells and the fragments for clotting. Um, then we have the yellow marrow that's also in the skeletal system that stores fat. So these are some of the functions. We also have some other functions like it stores minerals including calcium, and phosphates, and these are needed to form the strong, healthy bones. We already said that calcium makes the bone stronger um, and, and um, hardens the bone and all that good stuff. And that is one of the functions of the skeletal system. Now, let's talk about bone injury and disease. Someone asked the question about osteoporosis before. What is osteoporosis? That is when we have a loss of bone volume and what happens in this case is the bones become more porous and brittle and it becomes easier to break. Is that like the same as brittle bone disease? It's not exactly the same but it's the same concept. Okay all right so the bones are weaker and you'd hear about older people that might have osteoporosis and they fell and they broke a bone just from falling. All right because it becomes easier to break. Question? What bone is that? It's, the arm bone. it's not the arm, but it is, that is the leg. So wh what would that be? The tibia. tibia and the tibia. fibula that is severely damaged. This one was from a snowboarding accident. Oh my gosh. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, this one was pretty harsh. The guy that posted it said um, he got into a snowboard accident, and this is his x-ray. Okay, when you do break a bone, how do you know it's broken? <laughs> it hurts. So if something hurts, that means it's broken? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Right now I have a headache. Does that mean my head is broken? Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's not supposed to be the right answer. <laughs> All right. Now, when you go to the doctor, how does he tell if it's broken? All right. Sweet. So you take an x-ray. You take an x-ray and you can see an example of an x-ray on the screen. Um, and that can show you if you have a broken bone or a bone that's broken in many places like that one there. Now, when you do break a bone, what they typically do is they move it back into place and then they immobilize it. How do they immobilize it? Okay, they put a cast or, or screws if it's in an extreme case or a brace or something of that sort so that it doesn't move and it can have time to regrow. All right, so that is the end of section two. In review, we have looked at the structure of the skeletal system. We have then looked at the formation, how the skeletal system is formed. Um, then we looked at the function of the skeletal system. And lastly, we spoke about bone injury and disease.